Were you happy with how that first one went? Yeah, I thought it, was, well, it felt good. Yeah. Okay. Back with number two. And we are back with number two. So, uh, what do you want to? What do you want to do next? Just go down the list. Whatever you see. Okay. Is, uh, do you want to do this one next? I don't see why we should dignify that with a response. But if you, if you uh, we will. We will do it. I will do it. Asked I'm, twice I'm, by I'm the go same one. Um, X L O D X Churchy. Uh, for someone with with church in their name, he asked the very provocative question: Are y'all gay? Scott, would you like to answer that one? I would just simply say. If one or both of us is gay, we're not gay for each other, if that's what you think. So other than that, I think it deserves no. I will personally no say, I personally, honest to God, will say I am not. And I would say that if we are gay, <laughs> we're not gay for each other. Moving on, we need to... <laughs> I need some time and distance for <laughs> um, Crack. 3044, ask. Mm. What Ooh. are your guys' top three favorite authors of all time? You start, because I might Any genre, about. any era. Oh, wow, I don't... Uh, okay, then I'll start. Go ahead, start. I have to think about it for a minute. Okay, I really... One of my favorite books ever, Michael Shaben, The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay. I then read the entire Shaben library, and I'm kind of 50-50. So, but I love that book, and I love some of his books. Neil Gaiman, speaking of gay, <laughs> Neil Gaiman is probably the author that is living today with whom I am most satisfied. Everything he puts out, I devour and I love it. I'm not a huge sci-fi fan or fantasy fan, but he falls in that genre. S Spectacular American Gods. Read it. It's a good book. Um, and number three, another, there's a, an English author, Nick Hornby, who I would recommend to nearly everybody. They are very quick reads, very easy reads, but he has this profound understanding of humanity. There's this depth to his understanding of people that blows me away every time. Shaben, Hornby, Gaiman, and then... Yeah. Okay. Um, let me start with this. Um, there's a fellow by the name of uh, James Rollins who's written several um, historic, uh, historically based... Um, yeah, Henry Rollins. Story. He has a big neck. <laughs> Riller-esque books. He's... Uh, very Dan Brownish. Name name one. Uh, name except one. Uh, the Z better. The, Z, the lost the Z something about Z. No. Oh, um, no. He, no. His the the best book by him by far is a book by the name of Amazonia. I recommend that to anyone. It's a great read. Amazonia.com. That's where I get home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I would probably say, um, God rest his soul, Michael Crichton. I love just about everything that he has. Um, State of fear. That's a very good book. It's the only one I read. Um, did you ever read the, the Pirate Latitudes, the, the last book? That was actually a very good mm -hmm. book. Um, and then the, the last one, there's this fellow by the... He's not very well known. He's a, an Australian writer, a fellow by the name of Matthew Riley. He writes very far out there science fiction-y action stories that are very... They remind me of Indiana Jones. Mm. They're very interesting reads. Um... um the Seven Wonders of the World, uh, Six Sacred Stones, uh, Five Greatest Warriors, that's a series. Very good. I read. thought these were next questions. No! Uh, wait, what? <laughs> but those are, those are very good. And, um... Five Greatest Stones? Six Sacred Stones. Six Sacred Stones. Five Greatest Warriors. Five Greatest Warriors. Because I would say the greatest stone would be Sly <laughs> and the family. <laughs> <laughs> you see? <laughs> you Hilarious. Uh, Alright, next! Um, guys with steel chairs. Oh, ask. I am still a fan of guys with steel chairs. Guys, if and, I and gal, I believe, isn't there? Yes, I still. Uh, yes, she's yes. been. She's been. She's been away. They've all been um, away. If I get Skype, guys with steel come chairs, we're talking. Come back, sometime. fellas. Um, I don't know what Skype. If you is could like. be on any game show in television history, which one would you go on? Someone else asked about game shows. Uh, you know, I'll let you start because I don't. I there is one game show that is the great one of the greatest television shows ever. The Match Game, back in the 70s, hosted by Gene Rayburn, all right? So you have two contestants, you have six celebrity panelists. The, the, they ask a question like, Tiny Tom Thumb li likes to pop out of bed in the morning. That's why he sleeps in a blank. And so the contestant says, oh. Toaster, which is the definitive answer. And then the six celebrity panelists hold up their cards to say, and so they have to match them, right? Well, I would be a celebrity panelist. I would sit in the Richard Dawson chair at the bottom uh, center. 
that's the game show that I would be on. Uh, because Charles Nelson Riley is going to be up here, and then Brett Summers is going to be up here, and you can't compete with either one of those. I so you I, have a. Okay, go ahead. I would say just because I'm lazy, um, deal or no deal, because there's absolutely oh. <laughs> no like brain power required at all. You just pick a briefcase and you have a four. <laughs> That's all there is to it. It's so simple. And I'm Jim Gaffigan. I'm has lazy a joke. like that. He has a joke about how uh, we're just getting lazier and lazier when we order at the fast food restaurant. Four. And then he said, pretty soon we're just gonna make a noise. Uh. Oh, okay, we'll supersize it. I found that funny. He's much funnier than I am, okay, Jim Gaffigan. Okay, next. Um, Sean Carlton Zero ask. Oh, Sean Carlton Zero, I, I, I enjoy. Uh, John Morrison you know or Jesus Christ? It depends on, <laughs> depends on a few things. I mean, am I praying? Which one would I pray to? I mean, John Morrison, I can tweet. Jesus Christ, come on, it's an easy one. <laughs> Jesus won't tweet me! <laughs> Jace. Jace even. All right, just 4297, ask. Oh, that's not funny. <laughs> do you guys like Toy Story and Rugrats? I do. I love Toy Story. Rugrats, God, that's, I was, how do you, what, how, why do you watch Rugrats? Rugrats is like 20 years old. It's old stuff. I, um, like Excuse me. <coughs> Rugrats was a little after my time because I am very old. Uh, Toy Story I, is spectacular. The last movie cried. Cried. I was hysterical. My God. My God. Okay. Um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> OSU Fan 46 ask if the Rock Ohio face... State University. Yes. I, I gathered that. Go, bu go Buckeyes. Yes. Bucks. Mm, you, wow. If the Rock were to face Cena, mm. who would win? And who would the fans cheer on the most? We disagree on this one. Uh, no, I don't disagree, but I, I think would, it's a much closer call. No, it's not at all. Um, the Rock would win, and the fans would by far cheer The Rock more than John Cena. I'm, I agree, I'm sorry. but at the same time, people love their Cena, and it depends on how they're going to sell it. They talked in the years past about, hey, what if The Rock came back as this interloper from Hollywood? You know, he turned his back on the fans. But I don't think he could come back as a heel at this point. I think people love him too much and would be so happy to see him. And etc. Okay, uh, number one peep, Christian Ask. Who is your celebrity crush? Did we make a list of celebrity crushes? We crush? did not. We, we... It's very difficult for me because, quite honestly... Um, my heart at the moment still um, belongs to someone else. She knows who she is. I and if she's watching, if she's watching, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll I will leave it at that. But there are several. She's not going to be watching. There are several celebrities that do find attractive. Okay. And I put I just threw the list together. Yes. Just based on our knowledge. <laughs> First, um, Scarlett Johansson, very very attractive woman. Nice, nice. nice. And um, I'll just throw this one out there because if someone in particular is watching, she'll understand. Hilary Duff is quite cute. You think? Yes. She's a little... Uh... She, she would understand if she's watching. Um, Mila Jovovich, is that yours? Did you see the movie Dummy? No. That's a good movie. Okay, and then um, Shia LaBeouf and Zac Efron. No, 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 no. I was trying to write um, Char Charlize Theron and Za. Yeah, you I don't. I don't know how those got on there. I. I don't. I don't remember. Okay. Do you want to do the Twilight thing next? Since yes. I haven't done it yet. We've got several questions about the the, the Twilight. I no. mentioned Twilight in one you're of gonna, my songs. You're going to have to completely handle this because I. Okay. Here's my thoughts about Twilight. The definitive answer of Dawn Twilight. I read the first book, a friend of mine, female friend, and I know it's odd for a guy to be sitting and talking about Twilight, but I have strong feelings. <laughs> a female friend of mine said, you have to read this book. She said, it is ridiculous, but it's, it's just addictive. So I read it and I was captivated. I loved it. And I was reading it saying, is this a book for teenage girls? I just thought it was wonderful how, how just deep it was, how, you know, her love for Edward and the way they expressed it was wonderful. 
So I pick up the sequel, New Moon. <sighs> it wasn't as well written. I knew that Jacob was a werewolf. I knew it really early on. And she was dragging it out like, here, we got a secret coming up. And I'm like, werewolf, come on. <laughs> and then the thing that bothered me the most, though, is, so she turns to Jacob, the wolf boy, uh, to help get over Edward. And they have this connection. You know, uh, she's depressed and angry and sad. And then when she's with Jacob, it works. And Jacob is crazy about her, and she is happy with Jacob. And I guess a part of me says, gee, it would be nice if two people with a connection could connect. But she knows she held out hope for this stupid, uh, for this stupid vampire who was never coming back. Well, you see, honestly, <laughs> I felt so hurt on behalf of Jacob and angered as a reader. So I said, I'm not reading, I'm not reading anymore. That's it. No more Twilight. Then my cousin said, come on, come on, read. She knows, she knows I'm on Team Jacob. She said, <laughs> read it. You'll be on Team Edward by the end. And I read the series and nope, sorry. Edward, you know. I mean, the choice is, okay, so Jacob is a werewolf. It's not the ideal situation. But if she's going to be a vampire, she's got to die. And she's got to spend forever with Edward. What if she gets sick of him? I mean, most people who get fall in love and get married, if they stay together, are going to be together for 70 years. Tops. <laughs> We're talking 700 years. He's a vampire! <laughs> so... Okay. So the Twilight, the last two Twilight books turned me off of the. Eh, it's just, it's a sordid, sordid tale. Okay. Uh, wow. Um, R41313 ITS. Which is rabbit if you look at it as a word. Oh, is it? Okay. We'll look at it. Right. Rabbit. In the YouTube font. Do you guys collect anything? Um, I do. Um, it's cheesy and corny. I collect uh, Mountain Dew. There's several different um, varieties of Mountain Dews out there. I've, I own everyone, and I also collect um, Donald Duck memorabilia because I'm a huge Donald Duck fan. Mm, mm, I'm, an, I'm a huge Disney fan. I love everything Disney, and Donald Duck is by far... Do you love Newsies? <laughs> by far the, the best of all things Disney. I do like Donald Duck. So if you Duck. have any Donald Duck memorabilia out there that you don't want, please send it my way. Care of review guys. Care of review, review guys. You know, I, what did I collect? You know, the Muppets had uh, action figures that came out. They were very detailed and very beautiful. Um, and I bought a lot of them. And then, like I said, you, your, your affections for certain things pass. So I like these, but I had this big box full of them. And worth a lot of money, not worth a lot of money, but retail price a lot of money. And I just don't know what to do with them. So anyway, point is, I'm, st I'm no longer collecting anything. Because I just have too much crap and I'm just going to start getting rid of crap. That was, a, that was not a happy answer. All right. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this was just funny to me. Uh, Platy4 asked, hey Scott, what is your favorite kind of cheese? Processed cheese! <laughs> I honestly, I need my fix. I've been getting it. You know what? I, I like the uh, I like the the beefy five layer burrito, uh, but I also really like the volcano burrito because that's processed cheese, spicy. Okay. And I used to go well, Sunday. I would drive I, on Sunday afternoon. That was when I would get my fix. I was jonesing. <laughs> we have two questions from the Wingless Saint. First, um, what are your what are some of your favorite? Bands, uh, musicians, mm -hmm. um, and he has in parenthesis, and I, I highlighted this because I, I absolutely loved it. Led Zeppelin, greatest band ever. Yes, sir. I agree. I agree completely. Uh, Led Zeppelin is the greatest band of all time. Um, Second to Air Supply. <laughs> they're up there. Um, I would say. I saw them in concert. Did I tell you? Oh God, no, please. I would say um, I love the Foo Fighters. Um, on as. I know it's going to sound sappy. I don't care. I love me some Buble. I do. Love How can you Buble. not listen to some Michael Buble and not just love them? Love All them. time. Love the fellow. For me, I love Elvis Presley. I love Frank Sinatra. I love the Beach Boys. I know it might seem frivolous, but Beach Boys. They're, there's some depth in there later on. Pet sounds. Um, Leon Redbone. 
If you don't know Leon Redbone, I'm telling you, it's amazing stuff. Who else do I like? Elton John, did I say that? Oh, yeah, I got it. I think he I is. love Elton John. Uh, the Avett Brothers, that's a band that I have uh, fallen for recently, and they've got some good stuff out. Check out the Avett Brothers. And, of course, Meatloaf. Okay. Um, NFL. Second question from the Wingless Saint. Oh, there's more. Do you watch other sports besides wrestling? I do. Um, I love I love sports in general. I mean, and then if I'm watching asked. television, I'm usually watching Sports Center. Um, love baseball, love football. Not huge on the NBA. Love college uh, basketball. Bearsbound asked, and then I'll throw this one in. Do you uh, also do uh, do you watch uh, UFC? Uh, no. No. So this is what I want to say about this. Uh, I don't watch UFC because I, I only like people fighting when I know that they're probably going to be okay. And I don't like sports unless they're scripted. So I don't, I really don't watch other sports. Moving, I, I'm not, a, I'm not. Moving a, on. I watched a little FIFA. Okay, this is, FIFA a, I, don't, I highlighted this because it's just funny to me. Uh, let's talk wrestling. Ask. Let's talk wrestling. Josh. You both own at Doc Brown Flux. Capacitor DeLorean. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you can only travel through time, not space, and that what you do while there may have serious repercussions and could alter the entire universe, what time period would you travel to and what would you do when you are there? It's an interesting question. I have no idea. Oh, come on. What, what time period do you like? Oh, I love... Or what moment in history? I love colonial American history. Um... Uh, Pre-Revolutionary -re -pre War, Revolutionary War, pr pretty much pre-Industrial Age American history. If I went to if I went to Colonial America, I would find Ben Franklin with that damn kite, and I would punch him in the face. I, I would kick his fat butt. I would fly the kite myself, and I would be famous. You wouldn't need to because you'd be there in a in a, in a car, which would in itself prove. I would park the car in a <laughs> uh, in a ravine. <laughs> Uh, I could. I would go back to uh, the crucifixion of Christ, and I would say, "Guys, let's let's just calm down just for a minute, okay? This would probably not end well." That's another one. Playboy one eight two ask, "Why do fools fall in love?" I just think that's a very interesting question because I think love is a very important emotion that all people are meant to experience. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, with love comes heartache. And that's what you got to watch out for, folks, because it's it's not a pleasant it's experience. But love is worth it. You enjoy it like all of life. You enjoy it while it lasts. You work while you can. And that cuckoo is not saying that I'm stupid. <laughs> you enjoy it while you can. You work at it to try to make it as positive as possible. And if bad things happen, but bad things happen. If, if only fools fall in love, then I am a fool. Why do birds sing so gay and seven or ten a I'll, I'll let you do the next one, because you hire am I? It. This fellow right okay, here. Okay, McGee Brothers. <laughs> McGee Bros. And you're going to watch the time. We're up to, what, 18 minutes? We can go forever, I think. Yeah, but we're only going to have 45 minutes before we loop back over the first one that we did. Oh, that's right. I forget. Because somebody didn't rewind a tape. So, you're after some questions, are you, my friends? He asks. <laughs> well, I'd be glad to, to be of service. Are either of you two into video games? I know Chris has a PSN, but I don't know how much he plays his PS3. Okay, okay, that's a rubbish question. Let me try to think of a bad one. Of a less bad one, I'm sorry. <laughs> Would you like a glass of water? No, no, <laughs> that's rubbish as well. Right, right. Uh, last try at a decent question. Would uh, Do you like the UK? And can you do some stereotypical impressions of the English? Because I would laugh so much, it would just make my day. Smiley face. <laughs> if, you do a, if you do these, uh, this Q&A vids again, I can come up with some less awful questions. On a side note, hurrah for longer videos. Ooh, another question sprung to mind. Do you read your comments and do you feel the need to reply to them very often? You replied to a comment of mine once and I was overjoyed as you are in the top, in my top five YouTubers. You even beat RWJ. I don't know who that is. is. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, this is far too long. Have a wonderful life. <laughs> 
So that, my friend McGee brothers. So, what is your answer about the video questions? Um, he needs to look up the uh, the the raw review that we did. Um, the oh yeah, yeah. The, the, the British raw. We did. Yeah, well, I'll try to put a link in the comment. Book. Yeah, please look that up. But video games. I have not I played in, in a while. It's been about a month. I've had no desire whatsoever to play video games. My PlayStation is actually not working at the moment. As for the comments, very quickly, I read all of the comments and love them. I am now going to get myself in the habit of responding to more of the video comments just because... That's all him. Well, again, if you hear a comment, it's from me, but I feel... I really like the interactive aspect of YouTube, and I feel that I've fallen behind on my end of the bargain. So thank you, McGee Bros. I really wasn't trying to make How fun of you. you? I'll let you pronounce that. How do you pronounce it? Canaanite forever. Okay. Forever. Canaanite forever. Or for Ava, like Ava Gabor. <laughs> Two questions. Um, Ooh, I like this one. Do you prefer the Lord of the Rings books over the films or vice versa? Okay, this is an interesting question. I, I highlighted it because I thought it was great. Um, I love both. I've read all the books several times, watched the movies a billion times. I would say just because it's easier... <laughs> I would rather watch the movies than read the books. Excuse me. Okay. Because the books can... They, they, they do drag a little bit. They, 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 it's, it's not light reading by any means, those Lord of the Rings books. But I love them. Don't get me wrong. I saw Fellowship of the Ring in the movie theater. I had a stomach bug of some sort, so I had to use the... <laughs> Point being, it didn't really... It wasn't until I saw it on DVD that I fell in love with it and said, my God, I've got to read the whole series. So I read it from The Hobbit to The Return of the King. Adored it. But I have to say, I was not pleased with the way uh, the way the movies... I think the movies omitted some things. Yeah. Changed some yeah. things that didn't need to be changed. I think in The Two Towers, in the book, it ends with uh, the Shelob attack, right? Correct, yeah, that's that's the last um, Frodo is taken. And Sam to, um, has to decide if he's going, what to do. And he decides to get the ring. One of the most beautiful things I have ever read. Sam realizing, my friend is dead, but damn it, while I'm alive and that ring is here, I know what to do. I know what to do. Beautiful. Of course, it gets moved to the third, the third movie the third, because in of the middle chronological of the movie. reasons. They do it with that stupid mummy wrap all over Elijah Frodo, Baggins, whatever his name is. And he, he's been called Elijah Wood a lot. I know everybody says and not Justin lately, Timberlake. Like, not lately, but... Like. Anyway, that was something, to me, that's like the, the greatest moment of the books turned into a terribly insignificant, excuse me, movie uh, moment in the movies. So I'm going to say books. The books give me a whole lot more to think about and to chew on, and I just think they unfold better than the movies do. Thank you. Okay. And he has another question? Do you think Kane should get a title reign of some kind before he retires? I would say yes. Simply believe it at that. And I, and I did a video on this not too long ago. Uh, Multiple Man 78 asked a very, very interesting and question. And this will be the last one for this video. Uh, where were each of you when you found out Ooh. about the events of September 11, 2001? And how did you spend the day as it unfolded? Now, this is a very good question. Um, but this let's is... first say how old we are, because I, I don't want to be embarrassed. And Do you want to say? I'll tell how no, old I am. I don't care. Go ahead. I'm 31 years old. I'm 27 years old. But age is only a number. And I'm not pathetic for doing wrestling videos. Not at all. <laughs> anyway. Uh, you want to go first? You want me to go first? Um, I can go first. Go ahead. So it was September of 01, so I had just come back from college. And I was uh, lying around in bed and turn on the TV and I'm on the Today Show. I see it. You know, I think, I think both planes had hit at that point. And um, it was just this weird feeling. And my niece at the time was living or was, was uh, going to daycare at the local university daycare. Jeb Bush, our then governor, shut down all the schools. So I had to run get my niece. I didn't want my niece, who was like three or something, to uh, four, a uh, little. I didn't want her to see what was happening on TV because it was freaking me out. So we go to the store. I'm wandering around just trying to take my mind off of it, trying to keep her from being exposed to anything. And, and you know, it's easy to look back at history and to say, oh, we overreacted for September. Oh, we ran into Iraq or we ran Afghanistan or ha. Ah. 
But I'm telling you, my feeling, and I, and I remember it vividly, for the next few months, I kept looking around, especially the rest of the day, thinking, when's the other shoe going to drop? Because this can't be it. Something horrible. I would go on my walks down the road, and I would think, every time a plane went by, I would think, is this a crop duster spraying me? <laughs> I know that's narcissistic, but it, there was just this feeling of impending doom that lasted for quite a while. Was that too much information? No, no, not at all. Um, so that's where I was, and it was just a uh, very... It was, uh, for me, it was my first semester of college, and uh, my birthday is actually September 10th. And uh, I had a, a morning class with several of my friends, and we did not have class on my birthday. So September 11th, we came in that morning, and they were all saying happy birthday to me, which was, you know, a good feeling. And um, I can remember getting out of my morning class. It was about 9 o'clock in the morning. And someone walking up to me and, and telling me that a plane had just crashed into the World Trade Center. And I didn't think anything of it. I thought they meant, like, like a biplane or something small. I, like, you know, in, insignificant, but I figured... Well, I'll head over to the commons and, and see what's going on. And I walk into the commons and, you know, I immediately notice just this huge crowd gathered around this uh, big screen television set that they have set up. And I walk around the corner and I look and I literally walk in as the first tower is crumbling to the ground. And it, it was just, I mean, shock. I mean, it was like, what the hell did I just see? And I just sat there with this group of people, this crowd of people. I did not know who any of these people were, but we were all talking to each other. We were all socializing and, and discussing the situation. For four hours, we all sat there and just was, were transfixed by what we were watching. And I can remember going to my final class, and they said, you know, class is canceled, everyone go home. And I went home for a few hours and uh, watched the news, just kept watching the same thing. And... I had to work that afternoon, and I remember going in, into work at about 4 o'clock that afternoon and it just being such a somber experience because no one knew what to do with himself because everyone was in a state of shock. It was kind of, what is this? What is going on? And it was an odd day, and it was, it was an odd experience for, for several months because, as Scott said, you know, you didn't know what to expect. You didn't know what was going to happen, and it led to a lot of changes in this country that we're still dealing with today. So that that's how the day unfolded for, for I. So so we will end it there. That's kind of a really horrible way to end the video, <laughs> but we'll stop here and we'll, we've got some more fun stuff, so stay tuned. Shalom. Yeah.